Great. Well, welcome everyone to our small business webinar series. Today's topic is debt financing basics. And I'm Molly Heffernan, Director of Marketing for the Tory Birch Foundation. And I am so thrilled to be here and introduce Jerry Stengel, who is the founder and president of uh, Ventureneer, which provides educational training to underrepresented entrepreneurs at all stages of business. And Jerry is also the co-producer, her company co-produces the American Express State of Women-Owned Businesses Report, which I must say is definitely one of the uh, research reports that we look to for latest data and information. I, I read it every time it comes out and it's definitely the most quoted research report on women entrepreneurs out there. So I highly recommend everyone read that. Um, Jerry's also a Forbes contributor and longtime friend to the Tory Birch Foundation community. Um, we are all so thrilled to have you here, Jerry. Um, you're back for our webinar series, and you're going to talk to all of us today about where to find loans, similar financing options for a young business, and really how to evaluate all of the different debt financing options that are out there. Um, for folks tuning in, Jerry will take us through a presentation today. After that, we will have plenty of time for Q&A. So please put your questions in the Q&A box and we're gonna do our very best to get through as many as possible. Um, and then use the chat. I see you all in there using it already. The chat is for community building, community funds. So please connect with each other in the chat. Um, and then PSA, our session will be recorded. So if you miss something, do not worry, it will be available later. Um, so I know you all take notes, but rest assured that you can go back and watch if something uh, trips you up or you want to go back and really soak up the information. So I think everyone's had enough of me. And so Jerry, I'm going to hand it over to you to take it away. Terrific, terrific. Well, as always, I am delighted to uh, be here. And um, I'm just making sure that uh, I don't think I did this right. So give me two seconds again. Sorry, talking and um, doing technology. Um, it's not my uh, strong suit. So um, I'm just nearly there. Okay, terrific. So um, I'm delighted to be here and talking to you about debt financing. So um, one of my personal beliefs is that if uh, women and uh, people of color knew all of their financing options, they would raise money faster and at a lower cost. So uh, my purpose for today is to get you grounded with debt financing. Um, and uh, to talk about the array of debt financing options and even talk uh, a little bit about a couple of options that are debt-like um, uh, because they may be, um, um, uh, it may be easier for you to get that, that kind of financing uh, as opposed to a traditional loan. Um, so again, my purpose is to explain it all to you, uh, answer your questions, and um, really the first thing that you want to do uh, in terms of understanding uh, your financing needs is um, to do a budget, um, to work with your bookkeeper, your accountant, your CPA, or maybe you're good with your Excel spreadsheet and you can do it yourself, um, and um, understand how much money uh, you need. So doing that budget is critically important. And I'm gonna be talking throughout this presentation about CDFIs, Community Development Financial Institutions. And the reason that I talk a lot about them is that they are uh, number one um, economic um, first responders. So during the pandemic, um, uh, really, they came to um, entrepreneurs' um, um, uh, aid uh, by providing uh, low-cost, uh, affordable loans. And in some cases, they were also giving uh, grants. And I'll talk a little bit uh, about that. Um, and there was a surge in the amount of money 
uh, that went uh, to them. So they've been around 30 or 40 years. Uh, they've been proven really uh, effective in helping, especially during um, economic uh, downturns and um, uh, disasters like what's going to happen in Florida today with the hurricane. Um, you're going to hear a lot about um, SBA loans and CDFIs coming uh, in and helping um, uh, small businesses get back on their feet. Um, and one of the things that uh, CDFIs often do is provide technical assistance. So if uh, you uh, don't have a bookkeeper uh, or an accountant or uh, a CPA, um, they will often provide a bookkeeper or somebody with a financial uh, background to help you do that budget um, and uh, help you fill out the documentation that would be uh, necessary uh, when you're applying for a loan. So um, I want to frame your decision making uh, process for thinking about a loan and um, um, to some degree, it depends upon your aspirations. So um, if we can uh, get the poll, I want to sort of size up uh, the audience and find out how many of you are solopreneurs, small businesses, suppliers to government and corporations and high potential um, uh, companies. So um, you may be in multiple categories. Um, I am, I'm a solopreneur and um, I'm a supplier to government and corporations. Um, and um, this year I will be a high potential uh, business. Um, I've grown a lot uh, between uh, 2021 and 2022. Uh, the pandemic hit me hard, but um, business is coming back. So I'm not sure I'd put myself in the high potential uh, category, but um, 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 it's important that you frame what you're looking for in terms of money by what your aspirations are and those aspirations can change. So um, if you can just choose one um, and um, if you fall into multiple categories, just uh, choose the one that best fits you and hold the, um, uh, the poll open for, I guess, a minute or so, uh, waiting for everybody to respond. And do we have enough responses to share it with the audience? We're at about 75%. We'll wait, we'll wait a second or two and then keep going. Okay. So one of the reasons I want to uh, see this is, uh, or uh, see the results is I want to gear the conversation to uh, the type of business that most of you are in. Um, and uh, there are different um, uh, uh, options for uh, solopreneurs. Um, so, you know, uh, Kiva might be a, a good option for you, which uh, is sort of a cross between crowdfunding light and 0% interest. Uh, so it's a particular type of financing that I like a lot and it's good for small businesses as well. For those of you who are suppliers to government and corporations, the reason I wanted to know this is um, more and more, um, government and corporations are actually providing loans or financing to their suppliers. So New York City does this. Um, they provide contract loans. Um, I believe Walmart and Meta um, uh, provide um, um, supply chain loans and um, uh, just loans in general to uh, their vendors. And these can be very low cost. So for New York City, um, I don't know if they've raised the interest, you know, because of uh, interest rates going up. Uh, but um, you know, a couple of months ago, it would have been a three percent interest uh, rate. And I would imagine that the corporations that are doing this are going to be um, uh, low interest as well, especially for women and women of color. Um, for those of you who are high growth uh, companies. Um, 
I'm not going to be talking a lot about this, but um, in the deck uh, at the end, I have some of the articles that I've written about uh, revenue-based financing, uh, invoice factoring, uh, these types of loans uh, or uh, debt-like, they're not really loans, uh, but they uh, are uh, debt-like. Um, they're going to be more expensive than a loan, but um, if you were to go to a bank, you're going to get a ceiling. Um, and I wrote an article uh, about a company that ended up with revenue-based financing. Um, her uh, line of credit was a hundred thousand, uh, but she could uh, get a million dollars uh, from a revenue-based uh, financing company, which was Founders First. So uh, again, uh, in the back of the deck, there'll be um, uh, articles that will talk you through a couple of these uh, choices. So I was afraid this would happen. Um, as per usual, uh, my um, slides got stuck. So I am gonna unshare and share again. Nope, still stuck. So I'm not going to be on full screen because I seem to be having uh, a problem um, moving uh, the deck uh, forward, uh, but uh, you'll be able to, I, I think you can still uh, read the slides. So um, another thing to consider as um, you're um, uh, applying for financing is your stage of company. So are you launching? Are you growing? Are you stagnating? or are you faltering? So there are uh, financing options uh, that are appropriate for startup uh, companies. So uh, again, CDFIs will, um, with uh, a, a lot of interviewing and getting to know you, um, will uh, do startup uh, loans. Um, banks will not. So don't be offended when a bank doesn't lend to you. They don't lend to companies uh, that haven't been in business for th three years plus, unless you're putting up your home um, or you have something else of high value that you can use for uh, collateral. Um, how fast do you want to grow? So um, if you really want to grow fast, um, and um, I saw that there were some scaling businesses, then really you want to consider some of those other options. Uh, like invoice factoring, uh, like revenue-based uh, financing, they'll definitely be more expensive than um, um, a traditional loan. Uh, but again, your ceiling for financing is going to be a lot um, higher. Um, and you still get to own your company. You don't have to give away a piece of your company like you would if um, you were getting equity investors like angels and uh, venture capitalists. Um, we've already covered how much money you uh, need. Um, when, you, uh, when do you think you're going to be profitable? So again, uh, banks are not going to lend to you if you're not profitable because they're looking for um, uh, uh, your ability to service the loan. And what does that mean is they want to make sure that you can pay that monthly payment plus uh, interest on a monthly basis. So, um, you know, again, it's um, um, uh, uh, being profitable will ha have a lot to do with uh, your ability to pay back a loan. Um, there are, again, um, other types of financing. Um, merchant cash advances, revenue-based financing, invoice, pa uh, uh, invoice factoring, uh, purchase order um, orders that will, if you're not profitable, uh, lend to you, and even equipment financing. Because if you're buying equipment, the equipment will be uh, your collateral. Um, and uh, some uh, types of loans uh, will take into consideration what the money uh, is being used for. 
So um, know your financing uh, options and, you know, uh, uh, banks do lines of credit, credit unions do, um, CDFIs are increasingly uh, community development financial institutions are increasingly offering lines of credit, term loans, um, all of the above um, do term loans. Um, I'm gonna say that sometimes credit cards get a bad rap because they have high interest, but um, when you're starting out in particular, uh, credit cards can be a very useful tool if you don't let them get out of control in terms of helping you finance your business. And here I also separated credit cards from charge cards. And the reason that I did that is a charge card um, expects you to pay back that uh, amount of money you borrowed um, at the end of the month. So you usually have about 30 to 60 days um, and that can float you for 30 to 60 days. And there are now a lot of charge cards that are coming out on the market uh, that um, if you can't pay it back, will convert the charge card into a traditional uh, loan. So these are things that you can um, uh, take advantage of. Uh, one company that I know that does this is Funded. Uh, so F-U-N-D-I-D. Um, types, an additional type of uh, debt that I know um, a lot of uh, uh, people get very nervous about is a home equity uh, loan um, because you're putting up your home as collateral. Um, so only do this if you're sure that you're uh, going to be a success, because the last thing you want to do is, um, you know, uh, put the home that you're living in uh, in jeopardy. So, um, you know, always be very cautious with uh, mortgages. And um, I already have mentioned uh, equipment loans, which can be uh, a very useful um, uh, uh, tool for um, financing uh, equipment. So um, I think a lot of you may have heard of, um, usually it's the five C's of uh, credit, um, but I'm gonna talk about the six C C's. I break it up into uh, a few more category, categories. Um, uh, banks, uh, especially large banks, um, really are going to take a look at your credit score. So um, large banks are gonna be very number oriented. Um, they're going to care less about your character. Um, they want to, to know that you can pay them back, period, end of sentence. So, you know, they're looking for uh, a top credit score, which is usually about 720. Um, um, credit unions and small banks and CDFIs uh, will certainly look at you uh, and lend to you if you have lower credit scores. And CDFIs, again, are more likely or the most likely to lend to you if you um, have like below a 620 um, uh, credit score. Um, character plays in, um, especially with CDFIs, they want to get to know you. Uh, small banks and credit card, uh, uh, not credit cards, credit unions, uh, they care more about uh, your character. Um, capital, uh, a lot of, uh, um, uh, debt providers uh, want to see that you've put skin in the game um, so that you've put some of your own money uh, into uh, uh, the company. Um, uh, some uh, may want you to uh, collateralize your loan and we've talked about using your home, uh, equipment. There may be other things that you could collateralize as well. Um, and uh, the last uh, 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 of the six C's is conditions. And why do I talk about conditions is um, it could be the condition that your business is in. Uh, so I mentioned that uh, maybe uh, you're faltering or you're growing, um, or it could be the economy's condition. So the economy is, um, uh, 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 you know, during the pandemic, um, has not been uh, as strong as it could be. Um, so uh, during those kinds of periods, uh, it may be harder to get loans. So um, I'm going to show you this chart. Um, Biz to credit is a, 
small business marketplace. Um, so this is only done on their um, uh, loans that are done uh, um, um, on their marketplace. Uh, but what you can see is a dramatic drop in the approval rate uh, 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 in the approval rate of um, uh, banks, uh, alternative lenders, and credit unions. So when the pandemic started uh, in March, there was a precipitous drop. Um, it is coming back, but it is coming back very slowly. And what this shows you, in addition, is. Uh, which types of financing have higher approval rates. So alternative lenders, um, you probably have heard of On Deck and uh, Cabbage, um, have a higher approval rate uh, than banks, um, whether they're small or large or credit unions. So they take a higher risk and for that higher risk, they're going to charge you more. So it's really, really important that you understand when you're talking to On Deck and Cabbage that you understand the cost of the loan that you're taking, um, that when you use those alternative lenders, that you're using them for short-term financing as opposed to long-term uh, financing. Um, and um, again, you can see uh, the, uh, 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 you can see in particular that uh, alternative lenders are beginning to come back. Um, credit unions and small banks um, um, have that mid-level kind of uh, approval rating uh, with uh, large banks having uh, the lowest uh, approval rating. And again, they're gonna be very numbers oriented uh, and they're uh, definitely not going to uh, lend to you prior to uh, uh, three years being in business. So what are the pros and cons of uh, debt? Um, so uh, most importantly, you get to maintain ownership of your business. So many of you are not scaling businesses. You're not considering uh, angel and venture capital. Um, but for those of you who are, um, you uh, may also want to use debt or debt-like instruments because you get to hold on to your, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, more of your company uh, uh, than, you know, if you're using equity financing. You get a tax deduction um, and then the negatives are you have to repay it, um, you know, uh, you're, uh, if it's a loan, you're typically repaying it on a monthly basis. If it's a merchant cash advance, uh, which is uh, uh, some of the kinds of financing that OnTech and Cabbage do, you're paying it back on a daily basis, which is one of the reasons that it ends up being very uh, expensive. Um, if it's debt, again, you need to have that cash flow uh, to make sure that you can uh, pay back uh, that monthly payment plus interest. Um, and your cost of uh, capital is going to vary. So you um, do want to compare um, all of your uh, costs. So we've been through um, a lot of uh, these types of uh, uh, debt providers, uh, meaning traditional uh, banks, credit unions, CDFIs. Um, I haven't spoken about uh, the Small Business Administration uh, does loans. So you may not qualify for a traditional bank loan, uh, but because the SBA is going to guarantee a large part of your loan, um, um, a bank, a CDFI, a credit union um, provide SBA loans um, because, again, um, instead of you collateralizing uh, the, the, the bulk of the loan, it's the SBA, the federal government, that is collateralizing it. Um, we've talked a little bit about online lenders, and I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about them in a moment. And um, I want to spend a little time on Kiva because um, I just found out that Kiva is dramatically increasing the amount of money that they will lend to you at no interest. And they do that for social enterprises. So if you're a socially responsible business, um, I can't remember, uh, but it, I think it's hundreds of thousands of dollars that Kiva will now uh, lend to you. Um, and I'll be writing an article 
I'm going to say in the next two months about uh, Cooley Cooley, which is uh, um, um, uh, they do uh, moringa, uh, which is like a super uh, food, um, and uh, they do snacks and teas and things like that. Um, and they are a social enterprise, and um, uh, they they did Kiva loans early on, and um, um, uh, um, they would have been small, five, maybe ten, fifteen thousand dollar loans, uh, but they just got a very big uh, loan from them. Uh, and again, um, there are lots of sources for equipment loans um, and finding out from them. Uh, probably the best way is asking um, entrepreneurs, um, asking uh, your chamber of commerce um, or other networking groups uh, that you may belong to. Um, CDFIs, commercial develop, uh, community development financial institutions, as I said, have been around for 30 or 40 years, um, they really want to fund underrepresented small businesses. Uh, in the deck, I have a link to uh, a locator for uh, CDFIs because they are um, nonprofits that are in uh, local communities. So you're not gonna have a national player. I and mean, there are a couple of players that are close to national like um, Opportunity Fund and Axion. Uh, but um, uh, I don't know that anybody has a true, uh, completely national uh, footprint. Um, and again, we talked a little bit about uh, SBA uh, uh, loans, and um, I just uh, uh, published an article today about um, um, a socially responsible jeweler. Uh, so uh, they... Uh, um, do ethical sourcing of their gems and their metals. Um, and they took a SBA 504 loan, uh, which allowed them to buy the building um, and uh, renovate uh, the building. So this was, uh, th these are two women that know each other from uh, college and really uh, were very hesitant about taking on debt. Uh, but when they wanted to purchase a building um, and they needed to do renovation, they realized that they had to uh, take on debt. Um, so they moved past their fears and they did it through a CDFI. And one of the things that they had said uh, was they had just closed uh, um, on the 504 uh, loan uh, prior to uh, the pandemic. And going through that process with the help of the CDFI, made them more prepared um, to apply for uh, PPP loans. Uh, so um, uh, um, uh, payroll uh, protection, uh, payroll protection program uh, loans. Um, and um, again, they had to do cash flow projections, all of those things. Uh, but um, I can't say that they're uh, um, uh, taking on debt. Um, uh, willy nilly, but they've taken on other types of debt in addition to that SBA um, a 504 loan. And um, during the pandemic, um, a CDFI um, uh, was offering a low uh, to moderate income uh, loan and it was interest free. So it allowed them to open up a new showroom uh, in Brooklyn. So uh, one of the things with CDFIs is that um, since the pandemic, the way that um, um, CDFIs are lending has dramatically changed. So um, they are nonprofits. Uh, they get their money from the treasury, from banks, from uh, philanthropists, from corporations, um, all of those types of organizations uh, started up loosening the strings uh, that they typically attach to the money that they give CDFIs. So they started to allow CDFIs to lower interest rates, to um, uh, provide uh, interest-free loans, to um, um, forgive completely uh, certain loans uh, if somebody couldn't pay it back. So it's up to the CDFI now uh, to decide how they're using that money. 
and some CDFIs are using money to actually improve their technology so that they can speed up the process of lending you money. So some of them were pen and paper and really took a long time to uh, lend you the money. Um, and many more of them are using technology at this point. I'm gonna very quickly touch on alternative financing. Um, here, I'm talking mostly about merchant cash advances. Um, um, these are going to be on the expensive side with Cabbage and On Deck being the most expensive. Uh, but the other companies, meaning Amazon and HoneyBook, um, QuickBooks and Square, PayPal and Stripe, because you may be a customer of theirs, they know your book of business well, they're seeing your data, they're more comfortable lending to you and they're gonna, le uh, lend is not the right word because they're usually using a merchant cash advance uh, formula, uh, so you may have to have your uh, bookkeeper, your accountant, your CPA to um, um, uh, make it equivalent uh, to the way the uh, merchant cash advance uh, charges you to make it equivalent to um, uh, an interest rate so that you can uh, compare things. But, you know, I've used uh, American Express um, uh, 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 because I was really curious how it would work but they do like really, really short-term loans that are very reasonably uh, priced. Um, and I, because I'm, uh, uh, I'm not a vendor on Amazon or using Square or Stripe, I don't know their uh, inter, uh, in, or interest equivalent rates, but again, I think they're gonna be uh, uh, cheaper than Cabbage and On Deck. Um, what are you gonna need? You're gonna need um, your elevator pitch. Um, and before uh, I, we started um, uh, this presentation, I was on with the team from uh, Tory Birch, and they were telling me uh, that one of the most uh, successful uh, webinars that they do is around uh, pitching. Um, so I know that you're all very good at it. Um, so uh, having a really good pitch is going to build confidence uh, with your lender. Um, you're, they're really going to care about your financial statements um, and how you made your assumptions uh, for your projections. And I'm going to say something about business plans that may sound a little bit um, like heresy, is unless somebody tells you you need a business plan, you don't need a business plan. <laughs> um, you're much better off with an investor deck um, because an investor deck is like an outline and it allows you to change things very frequently. Um, a business plan, and I speak from experience, um, I used to do business plans, um, I guess in the late 90s, early 2000s, I charged 25000 or $30,000 for them. And as soon as the ink was dry on the paper, um, they were out of date. So I want you to be careful, um, you know, with doing business plans. It's the journey of the business plan. It's the outline. It's not that you have a 5, 10, 25 page uh, document. Um, your financials are critical, and I've got uh, a few tips here. Um, you know, and most importantly, it's explaining your uh, assumptions because they want to understand how you think, um, and that's really what they're looking for um, uh, uh, in that. Um, we can now open up for questions, but before I do, I just want to take you uh, through the resources uh, that I'm providing you. So uh, you'll see at the top of this slide, it's the CDFI lo uh, locator, and then all the articles I've written about CDFIs, alternative financing, and revenue-based financing, and uh, um, uh, a few um, interest-free loans. So it's not just uh, Kiva that does uh, interest-free loans. Uh, in New York, we have um, the Hebrew, oh gosh, Loan, uh, loan Society. They do uh, interest-free loans and they do specifically for uh, startup companies. So um, 
again, if you're talking, you know, uh, you may not, your local government may not have as robust um, um, a small business service organization uh, as New York City does, but um, your chambers of commerce or your local associations can um, uh, refer you um, to organizations that might be doing free loans and that might be doing them for specifically startups. Um, and then uh, two other sources that I want to mention uh, because um, they do do, uh, it's not that they're doing the grants, uh, but they're um, letting you know when grants are available and that's Hello Alice uh, and Fund It. So um, Hello Alice, I think, specializes more in government uh, grants and uh, Fund It would be more corporate grants because they're literally scraping the internet looking for all of the grants that corporations are giving. So these might be $5,000 grants, $10,000, $25,000 grants, and they really could make a difference for your business. So let's open it up for questions. Great. Well, Jerry, we do we do have a lot of questions. And the first one is more of a, let's step back, look at this big picture. A lot of folks on today have not yet secured any debt financing and are starting out and looking at all the different ways to fund their company. What are the the absolute basics to focus on? Is it, you know, ensuring that you have, you know, your separate bank account for your business? What are those other core basics that everybody on here must do before they even touch any of this world that you just walked us through? Um, so um, when I'm teaching, uh, for me, it's about the budget. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, figuring out how much money do you really need and can you afford to pay back um, the loan? Mm -hmm. So um, to me, it's, you know, um, getting under um, uh, the hood uh, and doing an Excel spreadsheet. Um, uh, I do it for the first year on a monthly basis. Um, and then after that, I'm doing it on an annual basis. But I really want to see um, how much revenue I'm going to have. Um, do I have multiple revenue streams? Uh, what are my cost of goods? What are my uh, g and my general and administrative costs, mm -hmm. uh, and when do I break even? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm less about the bank account, um, although I know that that is important, yeah. but I also know um, that as startups, sometimes you're going to mix business and personal, uh, and, um, and, and I'll be perfectly frank, um, sometimes I don't know why, but sometimes my business credit card doesn't work. So I have to use my personal credit card. And my bookkeeper always does both credit cards. And she'll, you know, uh, because I am a sole proprietor, um, she sorts it through. So my business is all my business stuff. So I know, you know, um, most uh, accountants are going to say, oh my God, you have to separate it. Um, the truth is that sometimes you can mush it all together and separate it at the back end. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing, Jerry, and just so that everybody knows and can walk away, it's having a very clear budget, understanding at what point will your business be profitable, and um, bank accounts, they matter, but it, there is likely blending. I'm seeing in the chat there is blending, um, but the record keeping that powers it all is key. You don't want to have mixing accounts and then messy records. Yes, so, correct. Correct. <laughs> so I don't, I'm not mix. I, I I'm not mixing as you said. No. Um, but it, it it is my bookkeeper who will go through it. Um, and again, I don't know why, but sometimes one credit card just doesn't work, um, and I have to you know mix things up. Um, I do have separate bank accounts. Yep. I know, especially for startup businesses, that it isn't always what, what you're going to do. Yeah. No, I think this is very helpful advice for everybody. And so I guess what other, are there other types of records, say somebody isn't in a position to, they're doing this all themselves. What other records should they be keeping in preparation for that first debt financing meeting? They're going to meet with 
a traditional bank, maybe a local bank, a CDFI. I just want to get super clear on all the paperwork everyone should be staying on top of. So um, again, um, um, you know, there's the best practice. So best practices is you're going to be using um, an accounting bookkeeping service. Um, but, you know, um, again, I teach and I've heard it from, you know, bookkeepers that, you know what, you can still organize your stuff in Excel spreadsheets. Um, that's okay. Um, but uh, be really detail oriented about what's a business expense versus a personal expense. Um, keep your personal out and keep really good records about your, especially when you're starting up. Mm -hmm. So um, um, the way that I do um, budgeting is uh, for a startup company, I will have startup expenses separate from ongoing expenses. So, um, you know, that pre-launch, uh, those pre-launch expenses, um, I will track separately from what uh, becomes ongoing expenses. Makes sense. And are there resources that you recommend for somebody who is very new and needs to make some of those projections to apply for debt? Like, are there great tools out there for this? Yeah. So um, I don't know that there are great tools. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm going to take that back. So there are, um, um, and now I'm forgetting the name. Um, nav.com, uh, there are a few um, marketplaces and I'll try and uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll update this because I'm just drawing a blank. Uh, there are a couple, a couple of uh, uh, fairly good websites that um, will give you advice on how, um, uh, 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 which credit card, uh, com uh, which credit cards are the cheapest um, or, you know, um, uh, have no interest, um, which types of merchant cash advance uh, uh, is the best at the moment in time. Uh, I think it's nav.com, but I'll uh, update it and make sure I put it on the resource uh, list. Um, are there others? Um, uh, again, uh, in your local city, there may be organizations that do this. So, um, in New York, I think it's um, Start Small, Think Big. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an excellent uh, resource that can help you, um, you know, with your numbers. So, you know, they'll um, uh, help you with the budget. They'll help you with marketing um, uh, in a different way. Like New York City doesn't do that kind of stuff. Uh, they do general entrepreneurship classes, but they're not going to be hands-on. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I want to dig into um, credit scores a little bit. So um, there were several questions on this. I'll start with one that's really about the, um, a lot of founders on here, a lot of uh, women are taking on um, student loan debt, putting themselves through school, and then perhaps are also having their credit score impacted along the way. Talk to me a little bit about how the credit score, student loan debt, how is that all impacting the founder and what should they be doing to sort of get out in front of uh, building up a better credit score? So um, again, I'm going to go back to CDFIs. So yeah. a lot of CDFIs have programs um, that will help uh, with rebuilding uh, your credit score or just explaining uh, credit scores. So um, I'm just trying to think. Um, again, uh, I'm in New York City. Uh, New York City Small Business Services does have um, um, uh, services that will help you uh, uh, build uh, your credit score. Uh, but again, local um, uh, CDFIs will work with you. And there are usually other organizations within a city. And I'll circle back to your chambers of commerce are, are going to be a source if you can't find the CDFI. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, for entrepreneurs who perhaps are out there and then are being, and maybe their credit score isn't there, they're potentially being targeted by predatory lending. How do you sniff out what is predatory? What is good lending? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so 
what do we need to look for? Yeah, so it's usually pretty obvious. <laughs> so when somebody has a really, um, the reason that I'm saying you know, with a merchant cash advance, um, you need like a bookkeeper or somebody to help you uh, translate that into uh, an equivalent interest rate. So, you know, when you're seeing an interest rate that's going to go above, let's say, 25 percent, mm -hmm. um, you're getting into um, maybe that's not um, predatory lending yet, uh, predatory yet. Um, but when you're getting uh, there are, you know, at 75 percent, 100 percent, 150 percent, you want to stay away from uh, those. Um, and you may, again, um, need some help in translating um, a merchant cash advance fee, the fees mm -hmm. uh, into something that you understand a little bit better, which would be an interest rate. Right. Well, I, that actually brings me to a great question about interest rates, which is, you know, we're seeing a lot in the news and headlines about mortgage rates, interest rates. What are you seeing and predicting as it relates to entrepreneurs, business loans, what should we be bracing for? Um, so, <laughs> yes, so I do think interest rates will go up. Um, you may have a lag with CDFIs in that they, they will try to keep their interest rates low. And I, I, I'm gonna cautiously say this because I, I'm, I'm, I, I think CDFIs are, um, in a transition period. And what I mean by this is prior to the pandemic, they would have been maybe, I don't know, four to 6% percentage points higher than a traditional bank, uh, bank loan. Mm -hmm. But since the pandemic, and I'm really curious to see if they stay with this, is that they were given freedom by their funders to lower their interest rates and they did it. So will they keep their interest rates um, at or below what traditional banks are charging? So prior to the pandemic, they were above. During the pandemic, they were below. And I would really um, encourage uh, everybody to keep your eyes out for uh, grants. So corporate grants, um, um, uh, not all of uh, the cities, the states have used up um, uh, the money that was granted uh, through, I can't even remember what it's called. Um, I think the initials are ARP, but they have not used up their money and they're changing who is eligible uh, for some of these grants. Mm -hmm. um, and some, whereas prior to, um, I'm going to say uh, prior to, let's say, the last six months, mm -hmm. I'm now seeing um, money coming for new startups that uh, is from these, you know, from ARP money. Yeah. Well, Jerry, I, when we were talking about credit scores, it yeah. actually sparked a couple more questions that came in. So I want to make sure we answer those. Um, I think the first is defining the difference between um, somebody asked, you know, I have my personal credit. Do I then have separate business credit? Where is that line? Is there a line? Tell it, break it down for us. Yeah. So uh, it's one of those that I'm still a little confused on. Uh -huh. So um, I've been in business uh, since 2009. And even when I applied for uh, my line of credit, which I'm going to say was before the pandemic. So maybe I was a seven-year-old business at that point. Uh, they were asking me for my personal uh, uh, credit score, not for my business credit score. Um, and um, I think that I've been negligent um, on developing my business score. I have a very high personal credit score, but not uh, a business score. So I personally have been negligent uh, about that. And you have to get it reported to um, you know, the credit score agencies. And I think that you're gonna see a lot of uh, business services that are coming out uh, that um, will improve your credit score and help you build that business credit score. So um, the charge cards uh, uh, like Fundit, I believe that um, 
their charge card could be used uh, or they want it to be used um, to build uh, a credit score. So it's definitely for new businesses. And I think that you're gonna see um, more of those um, kind of hybrid financing uh, models uh, mm -hmm. that allow you to build business scores, um, uh, uh, build a business score or improve uh, a score. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And it sounds like at the end of the day, a little bit of both really matters when you go into a lot of these meetings and especially when you're starting out. Um, for founders on, when should a business be pursuing a grant uh, over a loan or line of credit? Oh, <laughs> I would say preference for grants. Uh, no, and I'm gonna, like <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take that back. So um, as you grow bigger, um, getting a $5,000 grant isn't worth your tr the trouble of applying. Mm. So when you're first starting out, you may be trying for every $5,000, $10,000 grant that you see. Mm -hmm. um, but as you grow bigger, you want to um, do the $50,000, $100,000 uh, grants. They may have more strings attached. They may be harder to get. Um, but it's just not worth your time for the 5,000. But if you're first starting out, that $5,000 grant can really make a world of difference. And I'm talking about, you know, businesses that have applied that are now, you know, angel and venture capital backed um, that have done, you know, done that. Mm -hmm. We had a, speaking of sort of assessing what resource is right for you, someone wrote in that they've been in business for over 15 years uh, have been afraid to have debt, but are in a position now where they need to grow. And so they've asked which loan is best for them. I, I'm going to push further. How do you assess the actual loans that you're going in to, to meet for? What should you be looking at when trying to choose? Yeah, so uh, there are a couple of different things. So one is the ease of applying. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm just going to do this as an example, a cabbage and an on deck are very, very easy to apply and you're approved within almost minutes mm -hmm. versus a traditional bank. A traditional bank, and at this point, if you're in business for 15 years, you can go to a large bank. A large bank is gonna be way cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, but when I did my line of credit with my large bank, they were impossible. Um, you know, I had to stay on them, you know, um, uh, virtually once a week and remind them, like, could you get back to me? <laughs> um, I think it took three months. I didn't need the money. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I had the line of credit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so again, um, if you need the money fast, you're going to pay a higher price. Mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, So again, um, know what your financing options are now. Yeah. Um, if you can get that cheaper one um, when you don't need it, go for it. So a line of credit is a perfect example. Um, um, but there may be moments in time where um, you need to take that expensive loan because you're going to get it really fast. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when you say really fast, can you actually break down for us what really fast means? Because I think one of the oh, pieces yeah. of advice we give a lot too is fast. It, in the business sense, you really need to be planning ahead for your finances. So what is fast and what, what is taking a long time? Yeah. So, yeah. so literally uh, uh, an on deck. Uh, so anything that would have been uh, on that slide, the PayPal's, the Amazon's, yep. they're going to be anywhere from a half an hour to 48 hours. Okay. So that is fast versus I think my credit line may have taken three months. Mm -hmm. And it was a large bank. Um, you know, they recently called me and asked what I think of them, and <laughs> I did tell them. <laughs> and the only reason that I there were two reasons that I stay with the uh, large bank is that's where my line of credit is, and whenever I need to get something notarized, um, I'm again in Manhattan and I can't spit without um, bumping into my large bank mm -hmm. on every single block in Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, Jerry, from a large bank to a more local bank, 
what are the benefits of going to a big bank versus the one down the road where you can build? Yeah, so um, a small bank, a community bank um, cares more about your character and who you are. Mm -hmm. um, they may or may not be more expensive and I'm gonna put credit unions uh, in that category also. Um, um, uh, they may or may not be more expensive um, unless you go in and you uh, price it, you're not gonna know. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same with CDFIs. So um, I don't know if it's going to change, um, uh, but right now I would say that most CDFIs are still gonna be cheaper uh, than um, uh, a bank. Uh, mm -hmm. but that may be changing and that may be a discussion that in the next few weeks I might be having. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, that I might be having. <laughs> Well, it sounds like the that the six C's that you talked about, credit score, yeah. character, et cetera, really knowing where you're going to thrive as an applicant should also influence the way you look at which banks you want to set up meetings with. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if I were to do it all again, um, I think I would go to that small local bank. Yeah. Uh, but when I would have been starting out, that small local bank would not have had online banking. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody has online banking, uh, but again, um, I can get, get something notarized. Um, and even during the pandemic, if the bank that was closest to me, uh, all the notaries were out sick, I could walk a block this way or a block that way and go to, into another bank, you know, that, uh, you know and, and get something notarized. And a lot of the advice we hear too is like your first financing option or your first bank might not be the bank that your business is with in three years or five years. You as a business can grow along with the financing options that you carry with you or you move on yeah. to. So uh, it's all about starting at the right place that works for you and evolving. Yeah. Um, so one, I'm going to see one last question in because I'm conscious, very conscious of time, but co-founders is a hot, hot topic. How do you choose who, when you have two co-founders, who's applying for the debt financing? Who's oh, for uh, so I'll, I'll speak from personal experience. Uh -huh. uh, so years ago, I was in partnership with two other women. I had the highest credit score. Um, I was the one that took on, um, and, and actually we didn't have a loan, but I, it was uh, my credit cards that we used. Mm -hmm. um, so um, don't ask me why they didn't have decent uh, credit card uh, scores, but um, I was the one that uh, took it all on. Great. Good, good tip, Jerry. Yeah. I, we could truly do this for hours, but um, it, and there are always so many questions on these topics. Um, Jerry has a wealth of resources that will be in all of your inboxes later today, but also all of Jerry's work. Please check it out. Um, there is so much between everything Jerry has put out into the world for small business owners, all the resources on ToriBirchFoundation.org. So please you know, leverage what we have put out there as a resource to you all um, so that we can help on this capital journey. I know, you know, the money stuff can be the hardest stuff, but it is so, so important. So Jerry, just truly thank you. We are always so appreciative of your time and consideration for our community. Um, 